السلام عليكم جود افترنون ذيس از دكتور ميرفا تابون معاتي بروفيسور في كارديولوجي كونسلتنت ان فيسيولوجي اي ويل شو يو لايف ان ا بوكس اوف ا كيس اوف اي اف ابليشن يوزنج نافكس هير وي ستارت وذ ذا ليفت فيمورال فين بانكشر از يو سي انتيرور بانكشر جايد واير انذر بانكشر وذ ون اوف اور اكسلنت فيلرز دكتور الفي يس هي ويل جيت ذا بانكشر اند وي ويل ديليفر ا جايد واير انتو ذا ليفت فيمورال فين يس هي ويل تيك اوت ذا This procedure is done under general anesthesia. Then you will insert two six French cheese. This is the green cheese. You know it. This six French. Quickly, yes. And another one. We will take out everything, and then we'll do good flushing. Then a decapolar deflectable catheter is inserted into the CS. As you see, very good insertion. This is in the left anterior oblique view, and uh, his catheter quadripolar catheter will be placed into the his position. A long cheese is inserted into the right side, right femoral puncture, and a long cheese, eight French cheese, Saint Jude, is, uh, is inserted into the right side. Then this is the transeptal needle under fluoroscopic guidance. Here is the cheese, as you can see, this cheese. Yes, some die into the tip of the cheese, into the left uh, subclavian vein. The needle is introduced, and uh, we did transeptal puncture. And the cheese is now into the left atrium. As you see, we inject uh, dye. We take off the, uh, we push the cheese into the left atrium. Here, another view in the left anterior oblique view. Yes, we'll take out the needle and we'll insert a guide wire into the left superior pulmonary vein in order, yes, into this, this one, into the left inferior. The sheath is delivered over the dilator, and then we'll place the um, circular decapolar catheter into the uh, one of the veins. Now we are going to the right side vein to park it, because we'll do another puncture to go into the left atrium. We have to do two transeptal puncture. We park it, يعني, we put it in the right superior vein, and then We'll do another puncture. Now we'll explain this one. We we'll place guide wire into the left subclavian vein. We go down with the needle inside the dilator and the sheath. We check our position very well into the RAO view. Here is the, his caster. We are behind it. And then we go to the LAO view and we inject dye. Make sure that we are in the here. We are injecting dye through the needle to make sure that we are in the left atrium, making sure Everything is perfect. Then we deliver the sheath through the guide wire and the dilator. We take off the dilator and the guide wire, the sheath in the left side, everything should be flushed. And we prepare the irrigated tip needle, uh, irrigated tip catheter. And fortunately, we have a very good CT image for this patient. And this image Uh, we, uh, we check for the veins, we check for the left atrial appendage, and we place, we make cuts through the Navix machine, and we take the four, the left atrium and the four pulmonary veins into the machine. Uh, before we started, we had, we had also the TE, making sure that uh, the left atrium, before we started uh, this procedure, this uh, TE was, uh, done and uh, showed a clear left atrial appendage. Sometimes we, we use it in the lab in order to help transeptal puncture for difficult cases. The, on the right side, this is the CT image, the red one, with the patient facing us, uh, the appendage and the left superior pulmonary, uh, left, left sided veins and the right side veins. Here is the patient looking at us. And then we start to introduce the uh, catheters. We have two sheaths now. If you look at the fluoro down, one, the ablation catheter is on the left superior pulmonary vein and the circular catheter is moving now into the left atrium. Look with me, uh, we have uh, the map, uh, the virtual map is beside the CT image. I place the CT image and now I go inside the veins by the circular catheter in order to get potentials and to make anatomical map of the whole structure. You, in this machine, you can use with the Navix, you can, you can do mapping with the circular caster, you can do mapping with the ablation caster. 
using the circular caster is easier because it collects about 20 poles, uh, more signals, easier mapping. Now you can see this is the roving caster, the circular caster is moving into uh, the left side. The ablation caster is in the left superior pulmonary vein. I'm now in the appendage. Yes, because I'm anterior. The roving caster, the circular caster, is mapping within the appendage. I have the CT image on my side and I want to imitate it. I want to get good, good 3D, exactly like the CT and image, and this makes very good help to me. The, the, now I will map with the ablation caster. It is in the left superior pulmonary vein, as you can see here. I am moving into the vein to get a good volume. Yes, and I'm going down, and when I reach the ostium, I mark the ostial orifice because we don't want to make ablation near the ostium. We, we make ablation outside the ostium. We make WACA, wide area of circumferential ablation, outside the left side veins and outside the right side veins. I'm mapping, I'm collecting with the ablation catheter, moving into the shadow of the navix, the 3D, moving both sides, the CT image and the virtual image, I'm now into the inferior vein, going again. Uh, then I switch to the uh, circular caster to map the walls because it can get signals easily. Yes. You can see the, the catheter down is the CS caster at the arrow. And the circular catheter is getting now signals here. I'm now getting uh, mapping with this catheter. We can get voltage map at the same time and the purple is the good healthy tissue. We can get voltage map and we can get anatomical map. The circular caster is moving around as you see. Yes, I'm getting good signal. I'm making good map. Here I'm repeating the step I showed before, which is getting signal from the left superior pulmonary vein. Yes, how it looks like here. This is the ablation caster in the, in the left inferior pulmonary vein, getting signals. And you can see the electrical signal are shown on the side screen. I compare what I have with, with the CT in order to go to every single vein and to get good volume of the vein, good size of the, uh, of the shape of the left atrium. The appendage is important, the all veins are important, and also I should get some volume uh, in order to uh, finish uh, the virtual uh, picture I am having. This is continuation of the map I'm, uh, I'm drawing or I'm making. And then we, we look uh, comparing, is there any place to be taken better? Confirmation and also identification of the ostia. If you look down, we can see in the floro that the two catheters are moving, one getting a change between this one and that one in the floro down. Rechecking of what I have, as you can see, some potentials are seen from the site where the uh, circular caster is uh, placed. Sometimes you can induce AF while you are moving inside the atrium. Now, when I'm finished with the map, I to, uh, here I stop, I take off the CT image, and I, now I can use two views in the same screen, and I pick the proper view for uh, all the study. We have to give heparin. We start by 10,000 heparin, and we have to check the ACT. This is the ACT machine every 20 minutes. Then I make an anatomical map if I don't find the scars or low voltage area. The pink part, this is the uh, appendage. And this is the lines we draw while uh, in the left-sided veins uh, outside the ostium. The, the dots I'm seeing is the ostial points. I, I go behind it because we, don't, we want to do a wide area of circumferential ablation. Uh, yes, I'm here doing the right-sided veins. As you see, the green uh, uh, point uh, uh, light is the ablation caster and the circular caster is seen here. The lower caster is the CS caster. We make these lines look nice and then we place, we start, usually we start with the left-sided veins and we can see 
we uh, start the ablation. The ablation points are the brown ones. We deliver energy 40 watt anterior and 35 watts posterior. Some centers uh, do temperature probe monitoring. Here we go point by point, as you can see, for uh, 20, 30, 40 seconds, according to the operator. And then we check for the potentials, and then we pace from the circular caster for exit block. We showed this in our presentations. Exit block meaning that you pace from the circular caster at different poles and look, is there any conduction to the atrium? Is there any muscle sleeves still? You can see here, this is the, the ablation of the WACA, left-sided WACA, the ablation caster is uh, ablating and or sometimes I do pacing from the ablation caster as you can see here in order to make sure that every point is ablated. I go check the ablation line, I go check uh, the veins, I go check for potentials. As you can see, I'm, I'm pacing from the ablation caster, make sure that there is no conduction from this side. So at this point I say, okay, fine. This is the left side, the waka is done, perfect. Then I move to the right-sided veins. Yes, we'll move to the right-sided veins very slowly, gently, yes. Now I'll go ablation to the right-sided veins. I can move the lasso, uh, the circular catheter to the, to, the uh, to the right superior pulmonary vein. Here is the green point is my ablation caster and we'll start ablating at this point and we'll see the brown dot appearing here. Um, this is the anteroposterior view. The patient is facing me, he's anterior looking at me. I'm going with the blue points, point by point for 20 seconds each, anterior 40 watt, posterior 35 watts. And we are watching for the potentials after we finish the whole line here. I'm trying to follow this line, we call it right side waka and looking at the potentials. And then now we are looking in uh, REO view and in the PA view. And uh, the engineer can move with me in order to make things clear. We are in the inferior part of the right inferior pulmonary vein, outside the orifice, of course. And here you can see the potentials are gone on the, on the, on the ECG running in the Peruca. And if we look again, some dissociate potentials. After this, we are pacing and we are looking for any conduction. There is no conduction. This means that we updated this right side vein thoroughly. Here is the screen. You are we are pacing. I, I go with the ablation caster again to every point I ablated to the ablation line to make sure that when I pace, I don't conduct into the vein to make sure that everything is perfect. The patient uh, is done under genesis, I said. We have to uh, give him anticoagulation. The ACT during the whole procedure should be 350. And after that, we finish, we take the sheaths and we make a reversal of heparin with the anesthesiologist. Uh, echocardiography is done to make sure that the patient is, has no effusion. The patient stays for 24 hours in the hospital. He has to continue and, uh, on oral anticoagulation, whether uh, warfarin or NUAC. And on his antiarrhythmic medication, he used to take before ablation for whole three months. These are the blind period where uh, any arrhythmia in the, uh, can be, uh, will not recur uh, because this is the edema of the left atrium and the remodeling of the left atrium. Follow up of the patient should be done. And uh, also a uh, uh, halter monitor after six months in order to make sure that there is no recurrence. Uh, this is a very good technique to help patients who have paroxysmal recurrent uh, atrial fibrillation, who are not tolerating their medication and they have frequent attacks and they want to live their life happy. Thank you very much.